This is the 10-way Seago 600 belt drive, super efficient, lightweight e-bike. Let's open this up and see what it's all about. Perfect tool for the job. Now this bike should be super light, coming in right around 35 pounds total weight. So I should be able to pull it out of this really tall box with no problems. But first, let's see what we've got inside here. Looks like we got a giant box. Oh, this looks nice. Got yourself a huge user manual. And look at this. They've got the tools organized in a nice little compartment. Get some very interesting looking pedals. Then you do get your charger. So this is a three amp charger for a 10 amp battery. This is gonna take absolutely no time to fully charge this bike. Oh, that's light. All right, look at this battery. But this is a supposed to be, yeah, 10 amp hour battery, 360 watt hours, 36 volts. Man, this bad boy is super small. You could practically fit it in your pocket. This has a 6061 aluminum frame. This is really nice. And there we go, the 10 ways Seago 600 Pro is fully built. I've gotta say, I'm already loving this bike. The paint job looks absolutely pro. These logos really do look awesome on here. The fact that this has a removable battery, this being removable makes it so much easier to charge, especially if you're gonna be commuting on this. You can just lock this bike up as is on a bike rack, take the small battery in to wherever you're gonna be, plug it in, charge it, and with that three amp charger, this thing could be charged in a few hours. And they're claiming about 52 miles on one charge. I love the fact that this has Tektro hydraulic brakes. This is a super lightweight bike. Mechanical brakes would have worked, but Tektro hydraulic brakes really set this off as a premium build. Not to mention these really cool grips that kind of have this like, little anti-slip feature on the end here is a pretty cool touch and this fully adjustable stem so no matter your rider height you'll be able to dial this in to get it just right for you and then check out this super tiny computer they are making this bike look and feel like a normal bike but with the power of an e-bike motor in the back now these tires are really cool. I can't wait to try them out. I love the CST brand and these are the X Podium Pros. They're 45C tires and they're on 700C rims. So these are actually full, almost gravel sized tires and wheels on here. I love the spacing that you've got in here. There's plenty of room to try out all kinds of different tires. If you want something knobby, then you could do that. If you want something like this, it's gonna be good for city commuting and even riding in the rain, you can actually do that with these tires. Or you could put on some road slicks and see if you can get some extra miles out of it. Now, if you're not familiar with the way a Gates belt drive works, Gates is the premium belt drive system for a bike. You're gonna get a super long durable life out of this belt system. It's gonna be really, really quiet. Basically, this belt system requires almost no maintenance. You never have to worry about oiling this. You can ride this in the rain, the snow, the heat. It doesn't matter. It's super, super reliable setup. And I love how quiet belt drives are. Now up here towards the crank set, you are going to get a torque sensor. And this is a special type of torque sensor that's gonna give you really high efficiency whenever you're out riding. And if you don't know this about torque sensors and cadence sensors, so torque sensors basically work with how much pressure you put on them. The more pressure you put, the more power that goes back to the motor. So you can pretty much ride these things in the highest setting, lightly pedal and get a little bit of power. 
push down that pedal a little bit harder and you'll get full power out of that motor. And the nice part about that is, is it kind of sips on the battery as it goes, instead of just being full throttle like a cadence sensor would be. And speaking of power, this has a 350 watt rear hub motor, which is perfect for this size of a bike. This bad boy will propel you upwards of 20 miles an hour, and it has a special built-in clutch that was designed specifically for 10 ways bike, that will help you with start and go and giving you the best possible coasting speed and acceleration. Now, as you guys saw in the install, I got these nice metal fenders installed and they look great. I love the branding on the back, really gives it that custom feel. These things will be super nice for commuting. Now, I do love to see boss mounts right here, so you could actually put on a rear rack on this bike if you wanted to. Now, one downfall that I've quickly noticed and I'm kind of curious about, there are no bottle boss mounts on this bike at all. I understand them not being on this down tube here because of the battery, but I do wish that there were some bottle boss mounts right here so I could attach either a lock or a water bottle cage if I wanted to. Little details like this, where you've got these kind of 10 ways three stripe logo deal here. This is like the E in their logo. I love this type of stuff. When manufacturers do this, it really shows that they're established and they care about what their bikes look like. It's gonna be really interesting to see how a 350 watt single speed belt drive handles at 19% hill and how well this thing coasts around town. All right, you know what time it is. We've got this thing charged up. We've got it all assembled. Let's go out and hit up the road and see how this thing rides. All right, here we are on the 10 ways Seago 600 Pro. And right now I have zero pedal assist going because this bike is light enough that you can actually pedal it pretty efficiently without the motor on. Now it wouldn't be an e-bike if you didn't use the pedal assist. Let me tell you, this pedal assist does not disappoint. There's three levels and I feel really comfortable in all three levels. Pedal assist one right now, I'm already at 12 miles an hour, barely putting any effort in that torque sensor really does make a huge difference. It just allows you to customize the feel of this bike. So you put a little bit of pressure in, it'll push you just a little bit. You put a lot of pressure in, it'll get you all the way up to that 20 miles an hour. Now, one thing I noticed about the pedal assist is that there's really no difference in the top speed. It'll take you all the way up to roughly 18 to 20 miles an hour on all of them. Just each one gets you there just a little bit quicker. The other day I did a test ride on this and did 12 miles and the entire 12 mile ride, I kept it in pedal assist two and kept up with my buddy who was on a $4,000 road bike and made him get a workout. So this thing can be ridden with people who have really nice high-end bikes that are already quick and it can also just be ridden around to cruise around town. It's a super versatile bike that so far I'm really impressed with the abilities that this bike has had. I've already put it through several hill climbs. There's nothing to go wrong with this thing. That belt drive, the drivetrain, rock solid. There's no weird shifting. You don't have any low end parts. This bike is super, super nice. Now we're gonna take it around for a little bit here and show you guys how this thing runs and how it works. But I've got to say, this is the smoothest single speed belt drive that I've ridden. I've ridden one other brand belt drive and I've reviewed that bike on this channel and it was a nice bike, but this one, it just really takes the cake. It is super nice. The 350 watt motor is more than enough power for this size of a bike. It really, really does a good job it seems to be a little bit more responsive than the other brand that I reviewed. Now, don't get me wrong. This is not a 500 watt or 750 watt feeling motor. You're not going to get up to insane speeds like 28 to 30 miles an hour. This is mainly meant to take a regular bike and add a little bit of power to it so you can still enjoy the ride as if you're on a true, like normal hybrid style city commuter bike. All right, so I wanna show you guys how quickly this thing can accelerate. I don't know how well it'll translate through the camera and everything, but on pedal assist three, this thing gets you up to 20 super fast. Let's go. It just takes off. This feels so much more powerful than 350 watts. And we are already at 20, not even halfway to that mailbox that I was setting my goal at. At pedal assist three, 
This thing takes off and it's dead silent. That motor, you can barely hear it. So this does not have any suspension on it. It is pure efficient. So I think the bridge test is gonna be a little bit rough, but it's gonna feel no different than a standard commuter bike or a road bike that doesn't have suspension. So how to handle that? When you get to a bump, is simply kind of raise your weight off the seat and let the bike do its work. It works perfect every time. All right, let's stop here. Oh yeah, tire lockups, Tektro brakes, phenomenal. These are mountain bike quality brakes. Will stop you on a dime. Absolutely love these Tektro brakes. Here is the display and it's so simplistic. You have a power button up here. You have a mode button right here. And then you have your up and down to change between your pedal assist levels. Now the mode button here or the menu button will take you through several different things. Now you're noticing that it's flashing on the screen. You can't see that in person. That's because of the camera, but you get all kinds of different information on here. I love this right here. The range is super nice. So I know that I could go approximately 24 miles on this bike before the battery died. That's absolutely awesome to see. Hardly any brands will ever do this. So to see this on here is super nice. And then also you get a battery bar plus a percentage. So I'm out here getting ready to do the hill climb. And I've got to say this bike looks so much like a normal bike. I think that if you were just going down a greenway or anything like that, people wouldn't even know that this was an e-bike. It is so stealthy and I love that about this bike. I'm actually more excited about this bike than what I thought I would be. And I hope that's kind of translating through the video. I feel like I just keep turning on the camera saying how much I like this bike, but it's so cool. It's a perfect commuter style bike. And I was a little concerned with it on the hill climbing, but honestly, the hill climbing on this so far has been really good, but this is the ultimate test. This is the 19% hill grade right here that I test all my e-bikes on. We're gonna give it a go and see if the 10 ways can conquer this hill. Let's get to it. All right, we are off. There is no throttle on this bike. So we are gonna just leave this in pedal assist three, which is the highest setting. Most e-bikes come with five pedal assists, but this one comes with three, which feels about right for this bike. There's no need to have more whenever dealing with a 350 watt motor. But right now we are at, I would say a 12% incline. This could get pretty challenging. I'm probably gonna have to stand up on this because this is not just a kind of a free load e-bike. You have to put effort into this. But climbing up this hill should feel relatively effortless compared to a standard bike. Woo, it's busy today. And here we go. This is where the 19% starts. We're at 11 miles an hour. I'm still seated. Now remember, this is a single speed. So this is not a geared bike. You can hear the motor actually working now, which I haven't been able to hear this whole time, but I'm maintaining seven and a half miles an hour. Doing pretty good. There's no way I could climb this hill this fast on a standard bike. So there you go. The 10 ways Seago 600 Pro climb the hill. And it's not, like I said, it is not a bike that is just going to give you every hill easily. This bike, you're gonna have to put some effort in, but not near as much as what you would on a standard bike. All right, so we're gonna head back to do our big hill kind of coast test. Now this part right here that I'm climbing up, it's every bit of two to three percent or degrees. So on a regular bike, this would be pretty challenging. And this bike is just taking me up at 14 miles an hour, which is what I absolutely love about these e-bikes is you can climb hills really easy. And this one, you get a little bit of a workout, but it's still not bad. All right, here we go. 18 miles an hour, coast test. See what we get up to. Should go pretty quick with these super thin road bike, gravel bike style tires. 36 miles an hour. Very, very smooth. Feels really nice. 
no hesitation. I saw 36, I'm gonna have to go back and look at the video, but 36 is what I saw. Very smooth, super, super quiet. I mean, with these tires on here, you can't even hear the bike. You just hear the wind blowing by you. All right, let's head back and talk about the 10 ways Seago 600 Pro and what I love and what I don't love about this bike. All right, so let's talk about the things that I love about this bike and the things that I don't really love about this bike. And let's start with the things that I don't love about this bike. The number one thing is the price. This thing retails for right around $18.99 full retail price. Currently right now it's on sale for $17.49. I do think that that's a reasonable price for this bike, but with the amount of competition that they're gonna have in this category, I do feel that it's just slightly too high. I would love to see this bike come in for right around $1,500. I think with all the features that it has, it would definitely be a much bigger seller at that price point. But $1,749 for a bike that's gonna have almost no maintenance really isn't too much to ask. Now, the other thing that I don't really care for on this bike is this front headlight. I love that they have it there, but being that it's only 35 lux, I do not think it's bright enough to be using at night. I do think that it's great for daytime traffic riding, which is kind of what they advertise it for. But I do wish that it would at least have 80 to maybe 100 lux. And I wish that bike companies would get away from this lux rating. So a lux rating is the amount of light that it casts on a particular surface. And that's really only truly useful if you're gonna have it in a stationary item and it's gonna be shining on that same surface. But with a bike light, you're talking about going over all kinds of different surfaces at high speeds. And I think a rating that would be more appropriate would be lumens, but it seems like a lot of these e-bike companies, they stick with the Lux rating because I think it sounds a little bit more fancy than lumens. Give me a lumen rating and give me a little bit higher quality light and I'm sold on it. But as of right now with 35 Lux, it's just not bright enough. And the last thing that I really just don't care for is this adjustable stem. I get that it's there and it does make it to where this bike can be more suitable for multiple size riders without having to change out the stem. I just don't like the way it looks. I think it's a little bit too long. I would like to have a more standard stem that's just a little bit shorter. Now let's talk about the things that I love about this bike. There are so many awesome features on this bike. One, the Tektro brakes are a phenomenal brand for this bike. They have more than enough stopping power to stop a bike of much bigger size than this. So you're gonna get really good high quality braking on this bike and I really appreciate that. And unfortunately, a lot of companies cheap out on brakes, but 10 ways didn't, they went with these nice Tektro brakes. The other thing I love is this belt drive tied into that 350 watt motor. It is exactly the right amount of power you need for 99% of your riding. This setup is super quiet. It's always gonna be there, ready to go. It's not gonna require hardly any maintenance. And between the single speed setup of this belt drive and the way that they've tuned that rear motor along with the torque sensor, it's just pretty much perfect. I don't really know anything that they could do other than offering a bigger motor for people who are gonna be doing a lot of hill climbing. And the last thing that I really do love about this bike is the tiny removable battery. Typically, I would say small batteries are definitely not a good thing, but this style of bike, it's perfect. This 10 amp hour battery is super lightweight and it's removable. The removable feature on this bike is a big deal because whenever you get into bikes that look generally like a standard bike, they usually integrate the battery into the frame. And if you have an integrated battery, you've got to actually run the charge cable over to the bike where with this one, you can remove that battery, take it into wherever you're at, and then charge it up. And so there you go. That is the 10 ways Seago 600 Pro. And I think that they've done a phenomenal job with this bike. Very, very impressed with it. I was a little concerned that I wouldn't be as impressed with it as what I am because my last belt drive, it was good, but it just didn't have the power I needed. Where the Seago 600 Pro, this 350 watt motor really does produce the right amount of power for this size of a bike. As you saw, very peppy from zero to 20 in under nine seconds. So this thing has a lot of get up and go. If you guys are looking for a bike that's low maintenance and can almost get away with looking like a normal bike, 
then this one might be the one for you. And if you guys choose to pick one up, I would really appreciate it if you used my links below. That helps out the channel and it lets 10 Ways know that you watched my video and decided to purchase one of their bikes. All right guys, if this bike is not the bike for you, check out my e-bike playlist at the end of this video because there might be one in there that works just right for you. But as always, we'll see you guys in the next one. All right, if you guys are still watching, you are super dedicated and I really appreciate it. If you haven't already subscribed, you might as well click that subscribe button because it's completely free. And also, if you want to become a member to support this channel, go over to my members tab on my YouTube page and you'll see over there, there are five different levels to choose from all the way down to 99 cents a month. So when you become a member, there are a couple different benefits that you get. One is pre-released videos before anybody else sees them. And during that period, before they go public, they will be ad free. Not only that, if you join and you want an official Run Bike Mike sticker, I'll happily mail you one. So if you wanna support the channel even more and get some benefits out of it, jump over to my members tab and become a member. All right guys, we'll see you in the next one.